Hey YouTube, have you ever wondered how long it takes to complete an epoxy flooring project? Well in this video we coat over 3,000 square feet in just a few hours and the results are absolutely phenomenal. And what's crazy is that you can do this too. Stick around and let us know what you think in the comments. So first day on the job, guys, we're here with Innovate Coatings. We always like to come out and film some of their projects because they're local. I'll kind of walk you through what they have going on in this project. Pretty cool, they're gonna be doing a decorative epoxy and they're also gonna be doing flakes. And this is a pretty massive uh, shop slash garage, if you would say. Um, so first things first is shop blasting. Obviously, we wanna prep that floor, but we'll start on this side. I'll run you guys over here real quick. I'll just kind of go through everything that they're going to have to do to to get this floor prep before they coat prepping is the most vital part of any project besides obviously mixing your resin correctly okay so prep is key um, first thing they're going to do is like i said shot blast so from this joint back is going to be decorative epoxy all through there from this joint forward will be the flake and then that room that we were just in that will all be decorative epoxy so shot blast and then they're going to clean out the joints vacuum those get them nice and clean and then they're going to fill those with our patcher paste or our crack repair i'm not sure which one they're going to use they'll grind that flush now all the joints are filled and then any cracks they will also fill so that'll be the next step after shot blasting and cleaning all right rocket anything anything special about this Let's turn it on and go turn it on and go I want to kind of show you guys the profile that this does. So you'll see right here. So we have hard child concrete, right? And then where that shot's at, we're down to the aggregate. It feels like, it honestly feels like 120 grit, 100 grit sandpaper. It's really, really rough. And that's the profile you want. That's going to get an amazing bond uh, with our coatings and the concrete, basically weld it together as one. Yeah, so see, he's, he can do about 500 square feet an hour. So it really doesn't take that long. It's just kind of the same continuous thing. You're just going back and forth. But again, you're not gonna get this type of profile unless you have one of those heavy duty grinders, which most rental companies don't even rent those and they're super, super expensive. So we always use shop blasters. They're absolutely amazing. Okay, so a few, few things we gotta hit on before we lay down that scratch coat of epoxy. Remember, we're doing about 400 square feet per gallon. It's really thin. We're just trying to seal up that concrete. Brian's gonna hop in here. He's gonna grind this section that we left high, and we're just using a diamond cup wheel for concrete, and it'll buzz right through this real quick. Ooh, very nice. So you'll notice this is completely flush now with the slab. And then if we jump right over here, I'm hoping you guys can kind of see that there is a low spot, right? All this kind of settled in because we scratched it tight and we have a low spot there. Next thing we got is mixing station. We're gonna be doing a four and a half gallon batch. That's 400 square feet a gallon to coat this whole side. And then I think this side over here, he needs like, he said we need like three gallons.
So we know this epoxy needs to cover this whole floor, so I'm gonna pour out small beads, leave gaps in between. Again, we wanna get it out of the bucket. We don't wanna let it sit in the bucket as we go. So this is kind of the process. Me and Kyle are using some rigid squeegees. We're just spreading this stuff out. Notice we poured beads one direction and we're going the opposite direction, spreading it out. I don't want to just spread out this pile and push it that way. I'm going to wind up pushing a big pile over there. You'll notice we come through, we stretch it out because we have piles all throughout the floor. Brian comes back because it's not pulling it as tight as he wants. So he's using the metal uh, drywall scraper and he's scratching it even tighter. And then Brian's going back and doing a final pass with the roller. It's getting really soaked into that concrete. That's gonna give us a really good bond and it should seal up those pores to eliminate outgassing if there is any. So that's kind of the process. We'll continue this. You'll see us squeegee it with the, the thick rubber squeegees, the rigid. Brian will fine tune it and then Mark is going through and just rolling it real quick. I'm gonna go over how to cut the notch squeegees to get a flat squeegee, right? We have flat squeegees, but these are a lot more rigid. The flat ones are really flexible, not really made to, to scratch coat epoxy and put it down really thin. So when we designed these, we made these rubbers really long so we could cut the notches off to create a, a flat squeegee. Now you can take a razor blade, right? Cut them like that. I'm gonna run it through the, the saw here. You obviously wanna be careful where eye protection, probably for professional use only here. Um, again, the easier way is just razor blade, cut those off, and then you can create that flat squeegee. And you'll see why we do that when we get to coating the floor. So we just line this up. We wanna, again, cut, make sure that blade's cutting these notches off. And then if you don't take this handle off, you kinda have to do it at an angle so we don't get caught up right there. Now we got a flat squeegee. And again, that'll put that product down really, really thin. Yeah, money, dude. So we're on the next day, guys. This is the decorative coat day where we're gonna be doing the pigment colors, right? This floor is gonna look beautiful when we're done. Behind me, they're going over getting the mixing station set up and we're gonna go over all of that. This is very vital to set up every uh, section that you're gonna be pouring because again, remember, we're gonna be breaking these floors up into sections so we always have fresh material. So uh, we got Kyle's gonna be mixing here. Mark's gonna be doing the same exact thing. They're gonna be mixing at the same time because again, we're doing two uh, batches at a time um, and that's gonna cover two of our sections on the floor. So first thing we gotta do is dump in part B, which we have here to that line. Now, when you're dumping out of five gallon buckets, notice how he's dumping with the spout up top. You'll watch how nice it pours out. So we want to be right on that mark. So when you get close, notice how he's slowing down. We want to be real precise with these measurements. Mark's doing the same thing. He just added his B as well. So now we're going to add the pigments. Again, we're doing 4.5 gallons. So we need to add a three gallon pigment and a 1.5 gallon pigment. That'll pigment 4.5 gallons. Trey did an amazing job thinning out the pigments. So they're nice and fluid. Perfect. Milk chocolate. Now he's gonna do the 3P2 process and it consists of starting at the top, he's gonna go all the way to the bottom, mixing full speed when he can, go around the bottom a couple times when he hits it, come back up to the top, he's gonna slow down when he gets to the top and he's gonna hold this shaft 
as he's coming up to clean off that shaft on the edge so he's not splashing epoxy everywhere. Once he hits the top, he'll go around a, once or twice and then that stands for one. He's gonna do that three times. So he went up and down three times. Notice when he got to the top, he wasn't spinning full speed. We want to splash epoxy work. So now that stands for the three. Now the P stands for pour into a secondary mixing container. The reason we do this is because we always fill up part A in the, in the buckets first. That covers all the sides. And then we add the B. And unless you're really thorough scraping those sides, a lot of times people will not do that correctly. And then they have soft spots. Uh, the resin doesn't set up in areas. Um, and so we always recommend using a secondary mixing bucket. This is gonna eliminate any issues with your product setting up. So like I said, the P stands for pour. He's gonna pour into the secondary mixing container. He's gonna take the five gallon paint stick. He's gonna set the first bucket on one of the ribs, right? Lock it in. And then now he's gonna take the five gallon paint stick, scrape as much out as he can, scrape the bottom, scrape all the sides. And when he's pulling that stick out, he's gonna immediately go up with it so it's not dripping out on the bucket and on the floor. And so he'll, he'll do this. Brian's gonna be finishing up his as well. So now he did the P, we got the three up and down, P pour into secondary mix container and now all he has to do is go up and down two more times going around the bottom and the top when he gets there and then this batch is ready to be dumped out on the floor. Okay, I got my lines marked out, so I don't want to pour a bead past this. I want to just pour in this section only and just be careful not to splash up on the walls. We don't want to pour it out too fast. All right, so not squeegee is Real simple, it's got those notches. It's gonna put it down at the exact thickness that we want. I always like to hit my edges first. And again, I'm always looking at where that line's at. I don't wanna go past that line, which I kinda already did here, but that's all right. That's it guys, so that's why these knot squeegees are awesome, right? We knew we had to cover to this tape line. By the time I spread it out, I can't push any more product and we're right on that tape line. So we know this is exactly covered at 45 square foot of gallon. That's a good thick coat and then we add the highlights on top of that. So once that's done, we take the roller, 3 8 snap roller, make sure you de-shed it, roll it on some tape, get any loose hairs off. And don't just sit in one spot and soak that roller up. You're gonna remove all the resin there. I'll do a little, just randomly throughout the floor until it gets soaked up. And then I'm just going wall to wall. So now this is ready for Brian to add highlights and blend with that squeegee.
All right, so the trick with the squeegee is notice he's holding it at a low angle. He's not holding it straight up and down. He's not trying to move the resin. He's trying to blend the surface. And notice he's going in all different directions. You don't want to just constantly blend in the same direction. He's kind of moving all over the place. The biggest thing is you can see his vein pattern. They're all different directions. You don't want to just do the same vein direction when you're pouring those highlights out. He's got one going here. One's more straight, right? And then this one right here is curving into those. That one's coming out from the corner. So always be uh, conscious of when you pour out a vein, don't keep pouring out the same vein over and over. You get these overlapping patterns and that doesn't look good. So once you're satisfied, the next thing is to spritz isopropyl alcohol that's gonna make it sell out and give it dispersing effect. So he's just barely gonna pull that trigger and you wanna hit the whole floor with like small, medium, maybe a few large drops. And he's just barely pulling that trigger to get those droplets hitting the floor. So you guys will notice we got two buckets sitting here. Trey just bring to my attention, hey, these are ready to dump, which is vital, right? So we wanna dump these out. And the guy dumping out, just make sure you're not dumping that product past this line okay we don't want to go past the line benefit of the not squeegee is he can just dump the whole product right there and i can just push it and by the time i run out i should be right by our tape mark so next step we just repeat these processes right and i'm just gonna make sure i'm getting product to our previous floor I don't want to go into it too much and ruin those designs. Out of product, guys, and we are right on our marks. So we did the first two. We dispersed the surface with 91% or higher, right, isopropyl alcohol. And then we got this section done. I went back, I sprayed misted denatured alcohol in those first two sections. Again, that's gonna help it lay out glass smooth, any micro bubbles that might be in it, that's gonna help eliminate those and pop those. And so now I'm gonna hit this floor because we just got these two sections done. I'm gonna hit this floor, disperse it, right? Isopropyl alcohol. Once that's done, we're gonna do the next two sections. And then you always remember to jump back and miss those previous sections with denatured alcohol before um, you get too far down the line, right? You don't wanna wait too long to miss that surface. We're, we're rolling like a well-oiled machine here. We're ready for a new product. They got it set up. What's he doing? He's dumping it out of the bucket. Make sure we dump it out of the bucket right away. Get it down on the floor. Same thing with the next bucket. I always like to say, the resin's like you're spreading butter in a hot pan. Like that's the best way to describe it. It's just such a nice fluid product, so easy to spread. And these not squeegees are freaking awesome. We used to do this with a squeegee, our flat squeegees. We'd tape off our walls, spread it out. I, I did it so many times, so much, I was pretty good at it, but man, people starting out or uh, that haven't done a lot, you never get it spread out good, nice and even. You'll go to roll it, you'll have real sticky, spots where it's thin, some spots it'll be super, super thick. Yeah, so Brian, he won't even tape sections because he uses the not squeegee. He knows like, hey, I can dump a pile of product in the middle of the floor, spread it out, and when I'm out of product, it's at 45 square foot a gallon. So he doesn't even tape his walls for sections. He just uses those not squeegee, but it is a good habit to get into when you're starting out to know, hey, just to make sure your product's going, you know, the correct thickness.
Okay guys, project's finished. Well, this part, remember he's doing flakes on this one. Um, coated 3,100 square feet. Pretty fast process to coat 3,100 square feet decorative flooring. So next step is to let this set up. We'll come back tomorrow um, and we'll sh go over applying the top coat, fixing any imperfections that we want to. So that's the next step in the process. Um, so yeah, see you tomorrow. We'll finish up sanding, and then once we sand, Mark's gonna run the vacuum, we'll blow it out, and then we're ready to start putting the top coat on. Now that we have the floor all prepped, cleaned, filled in the imperfections we wanted to, now we can mix up the top coat. I'm gonna go over that process right now. Um, we're gonna be mixing two kits at a time, and then we're gonna be spraying it out of a Chapman concrete sprayer, um, sealer sprayer, right? Most concrete guys use this for spraying solvent-based sealer. This is a very cool way to put down uh, our top coat, and it minimizes roller lines. It gives you more working time. Um, instead of dipping and rolling. Dipping and rolling takes quite a long time on large projects. So you'll see how fast this is. Um, we just shoot it out of there. Um, very simple process. So I always like to start with the part A's, shake them up a little bit. And then we're gonna dump these two in. All right, so we got our two part A's because again, we're mixing two kits. And now we're gonna add our part B and we'll do the same thing with the water. I'll get the majority out and then I'll add the water in. All right, now we got all the part A and B in. Got our mixing paddle and drill, make sure it's clean. I'm gonna dump the rest of the remaining water that's needed into here. And we're just gonna mix it for like a minute and a half, going around the bottom, coming up. So now we can dump it into the sprayer. So once you guys have the roller soaked up, saturated right, we can start rolling out the floor. What we're gonna do, what you need to be doing is do your edge, nine inch roller, spray on your edges. And when you're doing your edges, you don't wanna go like 20, 30 feet down the room, right? We only wanna do sections at a time. We don't want that setting up on the edges before we get to it to roll out the whole floor, okay? So we're only gonna spray a couple feet down the edges, get all of our perimeter hit with that nine inch, and then we'll spray across the floor. Brian will, right after we spray a pass, Brian will jump in and he'll roll it out and thin that out. And you'll see kind of the amount you wanna put on the floor. You don't wanna spray too much and you don't wanna do it thin. You want a nice even coat. So you guys will notice, you can kind of see the roller lines, but they're not thick, right? They're thinned out, they're feathered out, and that's, that's what you're looking for. It's okay for it to look like this. Um, you just gotta really make sure you're not leaving thick edges because those will show up. Everything's thinned out, feathered out. Mm -hmm. 